I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. In today's video, we continue our London update series, this time traveling back to Savile Row to visit one of our favorite Savile Row tailors, Henry Poole, of course, uh, preeminent and known throughout the world as doing some of the best bespoke tailoring available anywhere. We have the pleasure of checking in with our old friend, uh, Mr. Simon Cundy, uh, to hear how things are going. Uh, Mr. Cundy, it's so great to see you back in the shop uh, with the cutters there at their boards in the background working away. Uh, I mean, in what has been really kind of extraordinary circumstances and times, I have to say, I really look to our British, uh, you know, counterparts to, you know, really see the spirit of just kind of pushing forward and continuing to, you know, do good work. Well, thank you, Kirby. It's good to see you again. I think the last time we spoke, we were just, you know, here by myself on the on the, on the, on the couch here enjoying a little, yeah. you know, gin and tonic. But uh, as I say, things have changed now. We're, we're back to a sort of 50%, uh, almost 60% working. Um, so everyone's on a sort of shift work going backwards and forwards. But we were enjoying a being back at Henry Paul. You can see some of the cutters behind us here. We have an alternative cuttings on each week, uh, which is great. Uh, and of course, the customers are coming through the door again, which is lovely. We've got fittings going on. We've got UK customers coming in. We've done actually just done a, a trunk show to, to Germany, which has been really good. Have you really? Mm. Oh, splendid. So you're able to at least travel to continental Europe. Yeah, there is parts of Europe where are open still. So we actually jump to a chance where we can get to see the customers. And we dearly miss seeing everybody. I mean, obviously, for myself, traveling to the US of A, I, I, you know, I've been talking to guys on the phone. We've had you know, a few people uh, reaching out to us, asking how we are. And it, you dearly miss everybody. And, and you know, they're lucky enough, we still have the swatch service. So people can actually choose fabrics and we send them fabrics to their homes. We can talk about it on, online by Zoom. Uh, and it's been successful. So this is still available. We have obviously an online service for uh, accessories still going on. But the main thing is yeah. now where everyone's back cutting their work and uh, you know, yeah. we're just waiting for the day to come out again. Yeah, well, if this has done anything, it's certainly kind of catapulted uh, at least Savile Row clearly into the 21st century. You know, hearing uh, the bespoke tailoring houses even uh, you know, mention the idea of a Zoom kind of virtual call uh, you know, would have been unfathomable just a few years ago. And so it's kind of really interesting to see, you know, kind of the innovation. I mean, of course, the cornerstone of the bespoke experience is that relationship. And I think without it, you know, really none of this would exist. And uh, have you found yourself really kind of falling back on that at all? I mean, again, these strong kind of profound relationships you have with customers? Well, still very much so. I mean, it's nothing more than the experience of having pure bespoke. So really, you're meeting the customer, you're going through the detailing of the suit, you, all the small parts to it, how it's constructed, um, and then of course being here to experience the fitting you know, between the stages. And, and you know, we're still getting that with the UK customers and new customers coming through the door. We've had you know, a number of them now, which is lovely to see. Um, but it's that element that makes it very special. And it's like anything in life, you, know, you really experience the quality and, and uh, service that these houses provide, whether it's shoes, shirts, or any sort of uh, division. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a rare opportunity for your uh, your local kind of uh, British clients to have the kind of the express service, you know, to really have the, the shop uh, all to themselves and uh, without other customers kind of coming in. And have they been taking advantage of that at all or kind of relishing in the uh, uh, increased attention? Absolutely. I will say, you know, the word fast track has become definitely for the UK clients and they've got that service now. So we've <laughs> We've definitely uh, uh, amazed by people since I spoke to you and had a couple of customers come in over the appointments only. Uh, they ordered it and they've already got their suits. And normally it would have taken them, you know, three, four months. They've had a suit now and we're actually delivering right now. So, so this has really, really made a big difference for, for the UK yeah. customers. Yeah. And I think, you know, the last time we spoke, you were talking about actually personally deliver delivering, <laughs> you know, a lot of the suits yourselves. So, you know, to have Mr. Cundy, you know, show up at your doorstep you know, personally delivering a suit, I mean, again, speaks to, you know, just the links that you go to to really take care of your customers. Very much so, Kirby. You know, it, it, we've known them for generations, uh, through the families. We've known them through partnerships in, in, you know, law firms. And, you know, every time we're introduced to somebody, it's very special. And we love to see the growth from them in, in, their, in their years ahead, whether family or friends or 
moving from companies. It's, it's incredible to watch and it's just del delightful, really. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's speak just a little bit about kind of your American clients. I mean, of course, mm. you know, there's been no travel really no. since March. No. Um, you know, how have you adapted, you know, to continue to, um, you know, to, to serve the American clients? I mean, of course, hopefully we, uh, we hope that travel will resume soon. Mm. Uh, but, you know, pieces that were kind of in the middle of the process, you know, were maybe at a second or third bidding. Are you mm. pushing those through to completion? allowing, you know, just some uh, allowances for alterations afterwards or our customers saying, you know what, I can't go without anything. Please just no. send me something. How's that been working? Well, obviously, from seeing the customers when we were out last in February, we had some suits that were at final fitting. So the delight was that they were now finishing those up and we can get them to customers. Now we're back at mm -hmm. workshops again. The coat makers are downstairs, the trousers makers are downstairs. We've got the cutting going on the background here. You know, that's all now in process again. So there is an element going out the door, which is, which is lovely for the customers to receive. The ones yeah. who, who were fitted last, who need that final fitting, I think, to be fair, we would like to, to get the blessing, as we call it. So they're being very patient with us, and, and we would just be out there, and when we can, and we're looking at towards, you know, maybe this November, maybe spring next year. It just it's purely bases on the, on the actual quarantine levels. You know, we would sacrifice two weeks to quarantine, um, if we yeah. can make it out there, but if it's going to be more than two weeks, then it's hard to, to work out how long we're away from here we're going to be. Um, so, yeah. you know, quarantining back here again is two weeks. So yeah, we're course. just waiting for things to, to have bridges, air bridges, etc. So, yep. but, you know, that's not to say that, um, you know, we've had customers who received swatches that have said, look, you know, when you were here in February, I loved this swatch um, of this sports jacket, especially this new lightweight. Um, you know, we're going ahead with that. So we're actually building up again for the, for the next trip. Yeah. How have you seen, I mean, have you, have you seen the customer preferences shift at all in terms of the types of pieces they're ordering? Um, yeah, I think, I think there's been an element of that in the last, you know, certainly ah, maybe 10, five years. You know, a lot of it's gone more, what's the right word? You know, the, 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 the toughness, the rigidness of what Savoir is has become a little bit more looser. And I think that... Um, you know, the fittings themselves have become a little bit more relaxed, shall we say. So that's not to say that the customers do enjoy the, the very much the lovely sharp suit that puts, you know, Savoro Henry Poole has always produced. But I think that's that travel jacket, that uh, grab a coffee and sit and, you know, sort of relaxed look. You know, dare I say it, the sort of Neapolitan style jacket, you know, which we knew was out there. Some of our customers always enjoyed having a little bit of Napoli, having a little bit of London. So we've had to adapt a little bit of that, and we've done so in the last sort of well, five years where Alex and Philip have been working on a project to make it into a super lightweight uh, with construction oh. changing. Um, so mm -hmm. that's what we've done. Yeah, and that's one of the interesting things. I mean, I guess, you know, in Britain, you know, traditionally, um, at least historically, you're working with much heavier cloths. Mm. And the moment that you move into the lightweights, I mean, all of the internal structure that has been developed over decades or a century mm you know, really are no longer adequate uh, because they're too heavy for the lightweight cloth. So, I mean, has that really, I mean, you know, like literally required you guys to just to totally transform uh, and adapt all the trimmings that go inside the suit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've you hit the nail on the head there, Kirby, because obviously a lot of the mills have been producing you know, technology cloths where they're, you know, the machines are actually making things finer. So obviously now, you know, what was like a super, super 180s is, is non-existent. You know, we don't deal with them anymore. Now we're super 100s, super 120s. And that reflects very much the weight. You know, so now we're going from what was, you know, the 13 ounce classic British weight is probably now around 11 ounce. And now the, mm -hmm. the American New Yorkers are wearing more the sort of like the nine ounces as, mm -hmm. as the standard sort of, you know, cloths all year round. So, you know, if we keep on giving the same ingredients inside the coats, it's going to be still the very much heavy format. So, the trimmings have changed too. So that's not to say that you can still take the old, older trimmings with the heavyweights, but we need to offer that lightweight experience. So in doing so, you know, this is like the canvassing which we use. And then of course, this is the horsehair we use. And these two combinations um, automatically go into the garment, which are already lighter now than they were, you know, 10 years ago. But then things like the demet, which sits on top of the surface of the hair cloth here, you know, we can actually strip that away and just keep the two garments here involved. And by doing that, you know, you get a much more softer chest area here. And then even yeah. the sleeve head is much more refined here. It still has a sleeve head. We want to keep that sleeve head like a very much a pool silhouette, the drape inside here. But the way you wear it is a lot, a lot, lot softer. So you can still mm -hmm. get something like this now 
as well as you can still get obviously the more format of the original pool with the construction yeah. site. But it's an offer. It's yeah. an it's an option for customers. Yeah. And and what on the spectrum of fabric weight? I mean, you know, 13 ounce being kind of on the heavy side that you're going to do your classic construction. You know, uh, when you're looking at kind of the spectrum of ounces down, at what point does that traditional, um, you know, kind of construction on the interior become too heavy for the cloth? And is there overlap where, you know, say on a nine ounce, you could either choose to go for the slightly heavier weight internal trimmings, or you could choose to have mm. the slightly lighter weight internal trimmings? Mm. Yeah, no, there's a bit of play in that. So obviously, you know, the, around about the 11 point, the 10, 11 point is, is your playing area. So I think okay. if you go below 10, you're going to move into that lightweight. You know, there's mm. no point having a six, seven ounce, you know, what, something like the fabrics we use, you know, you have these lovely, the lovely sort of linen, silk and wools, these kind of fabrics, and they're six, seven yeah. ounces. So on this basis, you, may, you must go lightweight construction. You know, when you get mm -hmm. to sort of like the 13, well, there's no point having a real lightweight inside there. So there's yeah. a bit of element on both sides. Now, it's not to say you can mix it up to a degree about the 11 ounce mark, 10, 11 ounce. Okay. It does make a difference yeah. how you wear it. Yeah, because I guess with the heavier 13 ounces, if you use the lightweight, the fabric is probably controlling the canvassing. That's and the other way around, where if you use the heavyweight on a lightweight 6 or 7 or 8 ounce fabric, uh, you know, you just don't see any of the fabric. It's just yeah. all canvas. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Spot on. Well, that's yeah, splendid. So. Yeah. But it's a, it's yeah. a, new, it's a, new, a new sort of uh, realm that Paul's got into. And, I mean, you know, customers are enjoying it. Even though they've, they've always existed having these, you know, sturdy workhorse suits, they may want something now a little bit more relaxing. And, you know, yeah. again, we've had lots of British customers enjoying it as well. So even the weather this summer has been fantastic. People are being, taking advantage of these sort of relaxed coats, as we call it. Yeah. Well, it's a really fascinating reminder that, you know, as Poole kind of pushes 200 years, the classic kind of idea, you know, that it, you know, that the Savile Row bespoke tailoring houses are really kind of stuck in the past is really mm. just not true. I no. mean, I think that this is a great example of you know, a heritage firm that has this rich and long history, mm. you know, still innovating uh, and staying, you know, not just relevant, but really kind of on the cutting edge mm. of, uh, of what's new and interesting. I think that's what make pools, you know, be here today. I mean, let's face it, some of the great names of the row have been around because they've, you know, nurtured the next generation. They've done what they did best. They've kept at it. And what's key is a sort of cut is the, the quality. And that's where Paul stands today. So, you know, you can see in the background, we've got, you know, considerably younger cut, undercutters coming through. You've got un serious old, older cutters uh, who have nurtured and brought through the next generation. So, you know, that's where Paul has always strived. It's never deviated from radical uh, left and right. It's always taken a middle road point that sort of, you know, work with the customer, and what's best mm -hmm. for the customer. And I think that's what, what makes Paul is special is that, um, you know, we're very much about, as you know, about the balance of the body. And no two yeah. bodies are the same. So we look at it and we proportionally make it correct or ideally correct. Yeah. So yeah. that's very much what Absolutely. Paul is. Well, and I know that, uh, you know, again, it kind of in that same spirit, you've, uh, you've been doing a lot of various collaborations. Mm. And so I know that you've got a new collaboration that you just uh, launched with Range Rover. Yeah. Uh, could you talk to us about that? Because, again, it's a two uh, absolutely beautiful kind of British heritage firms. You know, that, um, you know, have been producing the same thing for a long time, but, um, mm. you know, have really been able to innovate and stay relevant and current. Absolutely, Kobe. It was a great pleasure. We, we've worked with um, Professor Jerry McGovern, who's the chief designer, uh, for about sort of, what, 14, 15 years now. And, you know, since he gave you some great car designs of, you know, the Evoque probably is probably his first emblem of his brands. Uh, now the Velar, and very much the new Range Rover, the new Defender coming through. Um, mm -hmm. He cherishes um, you know, innovation through design and also the best in quality. So you know, we've worked with him on that and we worked with his suits on that. And we actually were celebrating, as you know, 200 years of, of banking with Coots Bank, the Queen's Bank, um, last November. And we were delighted that he was part of the collaborations we worked with before when he'd done the Evoke. So we invited him to show off his new Defender to, to the UK market. And it was the first showing. And uh, we were launching our book, as you know, the Henry Poole Founders of Savile Row book, which came out in November last year. And by yeah. doing that moment, we were lucky enough to have Her Royal Highness Princess Anne attend yeah. to, to you know, celebrate the book launch. Uh, so I had to obviously welcome her. And uh, as I walked her along and introduced her to you know, Professor Jerry, he, you know, she noticed obviously the new Defender was there. 
and she couldn't understand why am I here with Range Rover and Land Rover when we should be celebrating uh, Henry Poole. And he said, well, well, Your Royal Highness, this is my tailor. And that made sense to her. So as she walked <laughs> around the new Defender, and Jerry was very much you know, showing off the new styling of it, um, she turned around to us and said, well, this must be a, something for you two to get to collaborate on going from the future. So we sort of looked at each other and thought, crikey, what, that's quite something. So in doing so, uh, you know, I put it to Jerry to design a, a cloth for himself uh, to come up with some elements of, of heritage between the two brands. Uh, in doing so, of course, he took a lovely design of a, a lovely puppy's tooth, which is very much the, the black and the white. Um, and mm -hmm. then by choosing colorways, which was very much the colorways of the original Ra Range Rover 1972, and it was three colors we launched then. And that basically was um, a Davos white, a Tuscan blue, and a Bahama gold. Very much a 70s color, quite radical in its day, but they were true colors. So we figured out that we could use this fabric um, to give you a colorway in the, in the design itself and in the, throughout the jacket. So okay. that was the idea. So you have this lovely classic puppy's tooth um, giving you uh, a very traditional design. Then comes the overcheck, which is in Tuscan blue. And then for a bit of fun, we actually put the under collar and the feature here um, to have the uh, Bahama gold. So you have a gold <laughs> under collar. There you go. Yeah. Just in the right, you know, in a properly discreet way, you know, kind of an ode to the 70s, but that to avert. Exactly. So, so the idea being Kirby was that, you know, you could be at the bar and then flip your collar up. And then obviously people would see, see you from a mile off and say, you know, mine's a gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. the story behind it. In some it. ways, it's kind of like the shooting jackets where you yeah. flip the collar and you've got the, uh, the orange. The orange, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's the city version of that or the country version. Yeah, so yeah. We've, we've been, we launched that uh, about three weeks ago. Um, there's a lovely okay. film footage that uh, you know, we'd love to share with you that you can pass that on to your, your viewers. Uh, but it really gives the element of what and how it was constructed and why and the qualities between our two brands because yeah, you, know, you take a Range Rover, iconically, it still has the DNA of what it did back in 1970. So it's all there. It's all there. Mm -hmm. So when you say it's a limited edition collaboration, yeah. I mean, is that in terms of just how much of the fabric that you're producing? So it is only enough to make a certain number of uh, suits or jackets? Exactly, Kirby. So in part, of the, part of the dealing with the brand, we wanted to make it special. It's a, it's a moment of time. And that's where we came up with the number 50 for 50 years of, okay. uh, obviously, Range Rover. Um, so yes, there are 50. We're already getting through it. Uh, we're up to about, what, 13 or 14 now. It's been okay. like three weeks, so they're going yeah. and uh, we're yeah. enjoying it. And customers are ordering, as you can imagine, by emailing saying, you know, put my name down for one and we're cutting yeah. it ready for them to see. And we've actually yeah. had two customers, uh, one from Los Angeles where, you know, he's not a customer yet. He knows some of our customers, uh, but he says, strike me up one, here's my deposit. So. Yeah. You know, it's exciting to do these kind of things. It really you is. You haven't even met them yet. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the true sense of the word bespoke, right? You know, the fabric has uh, since been bespoken for. Yeah, it's bespoken. It's a moment of time. It, you know, we have a lovely um, hero label that tells a story of the collaboration. So in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, you know, it tells a story on, on the uh, sports jacket itself. You know, when you meet people, yeah. you know, you can talk about it. Yeah, and I would imagine that, I mean, Poole... Of course, you know, has a lot of these, you know, kind of iconic fabrics. Mm. I mean, of course, you've got your house tweeds, mm. uh, but you've always you know, kind of mixed things up with that, you know, kind of, you know, not seasonal, so to say, but uh, occasional kind of limited edition runs. And I would imagine that some of your, you know, longstanding clients have really enjoyed kind of collecting, you know, just like they might their vintage wine, you know, getting the That's you know, 2020, you know, Range Rover, uh, you know, limited edition or you know, the Coots, you know, That's you did it. the Coots one. Yeah, um, no, very much which so. Which is Kelly. a pinstripe. Yeah, no, we obviously the great uh, customers have heritage themselves. They have great, you know, historical photographs of them wearing Henry Poole suits. So like you say, with the Churchill, that's one of our house fabrics. I'm wearing today, actually, this is my uh, Randolph Hearst today. Uh, really? Okay. A great, um, you know, po po uh, politician stroke publisher. Back in the day, Citizen Kane, as we all know him from. Um, but this is one of our specials as well, the Hearst Stripe, uh, black and blue with a background with a stripe on the top, which is quite a, quite a novel idea. And then that was very much him and his, his fabrics. Um, the descendants we st still see, uh, you know, my memory as a child was seeing, seeing Randolph um, here, um, you know, three generations on, shall we say. But uh, 
That's, that's where it is, you know, so, so we have many of them. And of course, you know, with the masks, we've made that too. So, you know, now we have the heritage masks that come out from the fabric. So, you know, you have obviously other things like the Seafield check coming out. That's coming out very shortly. Um, we're working on some of the other collaborations we've done as well. So there's all sort of, sort of things which we, we like to get up to. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well, I mean, it is uh, really encouraging in a lot of ways, um, inspiring to just see how, you know, everyone's just kicking along you know, doing their work and just kind of pushing forward through all this. Now, it is, it is a tough time, but we've got to be positive. Um, you know, again, we've been absolutely enjoying the customers uh, contacting us, reaching out to us, you know, asking how they are. We're asking how they are. And this is what it's all about. You know, it's, it's, it's a, t a period of time where we'll probably look back on this in hopefully, you know, five, ten years thinking, golly, would you remember that time? You know, and that's, that's where yeah. we want to be. Yeah. Well, of course, anything we can do to support uh, please do let us know. And, um, you know, it's been just a great pleasure uh, to have a little bit of time today to kind of check in uh, with all of our uh, old friends from London, of course. Uh, you know, we kind of share that same concern with just being curious how everyone's, you know, really kicking along. And it seems like uh, you guys are really taking everything in stride. So uh, <laughs> cheers to that. Um, well, yeah, cheers, Kobe. Absolutely to you too and everybody out there. And, uh, you know, as I say, really appreciate the time coming to see us to here today. And I think you're going to catch up a little bit later on with Keith as well, who are our livery department. So that's a new area for you, uh, which, and again, yeah. is another sort of area we do here in Henry Poole. But we'll share that with you as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, one of the things that I love about a firm is, as old as Poole is that, you know, in every nook and cranny that you, uh, you kind of look into, there's always something new that, um, you know, that you had note about. And the livery, of course, you know, very much speaks to, um, you know, the tradition of Poole, the involvement uh, with the Worrell Court. and um, you know, it still is alive uh, and is strong today, uh, but although it's not as front and center as it may have been, you know, 100 years ago, it's still there. Well, I think with, with Henry Paul himself, he was quite a character, an innovator, a, you know, a socialite, and, he, and he, that's how these things develop. And, you know, that's the beauty of these things, that, you know, innovation comes through customers or ideas come through customers. And, you know, that's how he was, and that's what he did. And it went very much through, I think you would safely say that also Howard Cundy, my great, uh, great uh, grandfather, he was very much that sort of person too. So still today, we keep that in our DNA and our bloodline where, you know, Keith is out there taking on new uh, clubs and new areas of, of, of uniform or buttons or, or uh, ties that go with these clubs in, the, in these wonderful parts of the world. So it is a very much an, another area that Paul uh, still uh, stands on and you know the archive books you've seen all the buttons that we've made yeah, you've seen even the swords that have henry paul on mm -hmm. them so we're very much a sort of brand that's tentacles in many areas that has existed since you know over 200 years and long may that reign if we can keep on doing that that's another part of a an angle of business we can work with and and enjoy meeting the, those clubs and people we work with yeah absolutely well uh, I'm so thrilled to hear that uh, everything's going well and that you guys are kind of pushing forward. And, um, you know, thanks for a little bit of your time. We look forward to meeting with Keith, of course, uh, to, uh, to, to be uh, shown some of the livery, uh, which I'm really quite excited about because we hadn't had time to do that before. And again, you know, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cundy, for allowing us in and uh, for welcoming us and for showing us around and kind of giving us the updates. So uh, we look forward to, of course, staying in touch, you know, through Instagram at Henry Poole and then uh, through the website. And of course, uh, I'm sure all of your existing customers uh, know uh, how to get in touch with you easily and hopefully they are. Indeed, Kirby. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, we do check out the website, the Instagram. We have a newsletter that comes out uh, every month that tells a little bit what's going on and yeah, do check into that too. Good and point. I, of course, I imagine that, you know, as soon as uh, you're able to release any dates for your future uh, trunk shows, uh, that those will be released through the newsletter uh, and on social media. Yeah, very much so. The trunk shows is a key part of the business. We'll be updating customers on that. Uh, it's through our website. We obviously have that on uh, www.henrypool.com. That gives you the dates when we're coming out. It gives you the social side of what we're doing, uh, the new updates on new ventures, uh, new masks, whatever we do, new cloths, new fabrics. Uh, so yeah, welcome to it. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you all yeah. back across the pond soon. Yeah, hopefully soon. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kundi. Great seeing you. Uh, please send my regards to the entire team, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to enjoy a nice uh, drink in uh, London again here soon. You're welcome to it, Kevin. We're ready when you are. Yeah, cheers. Cheers now.
So there we are, Simon Cundy, a managing director and really managing family member of the renowned bespoke tailoring firm, Henry Poole. Uh, Henry Poole really, uh, for all intents and purposes, founded Salabro. They were the first bespoke tailoring firm to really establish themselves down that street and has a really an incredibly rich history. Uh, we've got an entire series of videos uh, that we were able to actually film on location at Henry Poole on Savile Row. And make sure you check the description of this video uh, to links to those uh, various pieces that we filmed uh, there. Uh, you certainly do not want to miss them. Of course, if you're new to this channel, uh, make sure you hit that red subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Uh, give us the thumbs up if you like this video. And of course, please comment in the comment section below. Uh, let us know what you thought of the piece and whether or not um, you have any thoughts or uh, just messages you'd like to send off over the pond uh, to Henry Poole. If you haven't had an opportunity to visit KirbyAllison.com, of course, please do so. Uh, it is how we support this channel. And there you will find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories for the well-dressed, like this sovereign grade necktie that I'm wearing today, pocket squares, socks, really an entire collection of accessories for the well-dressed. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thank you so much for watching this installment of our London Update series.